All right, let's see. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Here are 10 albums you owe it to yourself to listen to. Now! Now. You should listen to it now. So these are going to be more of recommendations than reviews. So I'm going to kind of go through, I mean, 10. I was going to say a lot, but no, I'm literally going to go through 10 kind of more quickly just so that, you know, get through it. Hopefully something seems interesting. They should. I mean, these are all completely different. The first album on the list is Wall Socket by Underscores, which I promise we're going to get a bit more niche than this as we go on. This was a pretty big release from last year. A lot of people's favorite album from last year. And in fact, it was my favorite album from last year. So I had kind of soft promise, not promised. I was, I suggested like, okay, well, I'll do an uh, album of the year video for 2023. And then I kind of, well, I filmed it, but I didn't like it when I was watching back. I was like, this kind of sucks. So that never really got out. So here, here's my apology, okay? Here's the number one, you know, that, that video, we don't have to talk about it, okay? So this album uh, rules. What's really cool about this album is that there's a really interesting narrative. It's an interesting take on the concept album. Usually when I think of concept albums, I'm thinking a story, beginning, middle, end, stuff like that. However, here it's not linear at all. Part of the fun that I was having when listening to this album the first time was figuring out what the concept even was. It was pretty clear that there is a concept uh, very early on. It's like, okay, okay, there is something going on here. But then it's like, I was expecting it to be like this, I guess, based on my preconceived notions. But then I, nothing was adding up. I was like, okay, well, how does this make any sense? Then, so then you have to like recontextualize everything you know, go to the drawing board, really analyze the evidence a bit and kind of figure out what she's giving you. I also wanted to mention, hello, it's me again. Um, I also wanted to mention that I've never really heard an album that truly deserves like a content warning and especially in a positive way. I mean, there's some old songs where it's like, okay, well, they're just saying slurs like, okay, yeah, maybe that deserves a content warning. But like this, there's some songs on here where it's like, she's like describing these very vivid accounts of like her being groomed or like a, a song like detailing like a suicide. Like these are not issues I've ever had to deal with personally, thankfully, thankfully. So I, and they still like mess me up. I can only imagine what, what you know, these songs would mean to someone who actually had to deal with some of this stuff. And I've never heard anybody do something um, like that and still make it sound good. <laughs> I've, I've heard, you know, these topics be covered, but in a way, and the songs just aren't very good. These songs are really, really good, where I'm like shaking my head like, I cannot believe this. But then like the next minute, I'm like, <laughs> like edit, anyways. Shout out to Underscores. All right, the second album, completely different. It's by Joel Ross. It's called The Parable of the Poet. So Joel Ross is a vibraphonist, composer, performer, uh, genius. <laughs> well, I don't know if he's a genius. I haven't really heard him talk, but I, I would assume that he's a genius. Um, he signed to Blue Note Records. If you know Blue Note, they're like the legendary uh, jazz uh, record label. They've been like the record label and they've been the one that's really uh, persevered, that has stood the test of time, so to say. They weren't necessarily always the most popular, but they have persevered, and they're, it's prestigious to be signed to Blue Note. And Joel Ross is doing it, and him, along with people who are also signed to that record label, are kind of pushing jazz forward in a, the contemporary sense, and they're kind of defining this generation's sound to a certain degree, and so I, I'm really, enjoying uh his his vision i enjoyed kingmaker this one's great too this is a completely different sound than kingmaker it's pretty through composed and very i don't i don't want to say ecm but it, it kind of does feel like there's like a classical element there to it a little bit um lots of great in, uh, improvisation i love how he structures it into the compositions it's very cool, and you should listen to it. A lot of modern jazz is not gonna be very approachable to people who are not already interested in any type of jazz. If, you, if you're not really interested, you know, modern jazz usually isn't gonna be good, but this 
is some that I would say is more approachable. Next album, Lillian Rosarian. Uh, I think it's called For Every Flower in My Garden. Great name. So what got me even to listen to this album in the first place was a review on Rate Your Music and like the, the quote that got me to listen to it. It said something along the lines of like, it, it called the album a triumph in sound design. And I, that, that quote sticks with me to this very day. This, this was a couple years ago now. And I think about that because it really is. That's really the best way to, to sum up the album is like, it's like the way that Lillian is manipulating audio and audio, audio clips here. It's really, really genius and something I haven't really heard before. There's this really cool thing. I don't think it happens in every song, but it happens on quite a few of them where in your left headphone, you should listen to this with headphones. And like the left headphone, like if you take off the right headphone, right? You just have the left one on. You're going to hear one song and then you switch. You put the right one on and the left one on. You're going to hear a whole different song here. Then you put them on and you're going to notice that there's one that's in the middle that's in both. So there's like three songs going on at one time. And, and although there are, they are three different things, they also combine to make one composite song. So you can say there's like four songs going on at like any given time. And it all combines in a really cool and unique way. Uh, it's pretty glitchy. There's a lot of, you know, stops, starts, stuff like this. But it's really, 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 really great and unique. I love the first song. I'm wide awake. That one is really cool there's a great moment i just love walls of sound and this has a great wall of sound in it next up is lauren water um who carries you um so i'm i'm a day one fan of lauren otter um her song the baptist uh i've been there s since then i've listened to that song so many times and i've listened to this this is an ep this is an album i've listened to this ep so much it's actually so addicting it's so moody. Um, I was feeling really moody a couple weeks ago. And by a couple weeks ago, I mean last week. And by last week, I mean uh, it's Saturday right now. And like, I'm talking like Wednesday. <laughs> I was feeling really moody. So I put this on and listened to it, I think like seven times in a row or something. Uh, and it did what it needed to do. Gets, gets me in that headspace where I'm just like, oh yeah. <laughs> Next up is a legend. We have Louise Bonfa with Solo and Rio. Uh, so Louis Bonfa, little history lesson, was pretty much the guy who created Bossa Nova. It was him and Joe Beam, Antonio Carlos Joe Beam. They pretty much, they collabed on this like, <laughs> they collabed. This was like 1950s like, or whatever, or 60s maybe. They, they made a soundtrack together um, for Black Orpheus, Brazilian movie. And they pretty much created a whole genre of music which is a huge, a huge genre of music, um, and yeah, Bossa Nova. Shout out to Bossa Nova. So this is Luis Bonfa. So this is a completely solo guitar uh, album. So it's just him, his acoustic guitar, and he's singing. Some of the songs he wrote. Some of the songs maybe he didn't write. Uh, some sometimes he's not singing. Sometimes it's just guitar. Anyways, it's great. It's also it's very long. I think there's like quite a quite a lot of songs there. And they're all great. It's a, it's a vibe. It's a vibe and a half. You should check it out if you're a fan of guitar. Next up, Feeble Little Horse, Heyday. This one is just a really fun album. The energy they give off here is super infectious. It's fun. And it's very earwormy. Gets, songs get stuck in my head for no reason. It was the type of thing where I listened to it and I was like, okay, that's good. And then I woke up the next morning with like, Kennedy's got a hit on me. <laughs> it's just stuck in my head like all day. So that's great. Shout out to them. They also had a new album that was pretty good. Uh, this Heyday one is pretty nice though. I like This is the one I'm recommending. Possibly for the most out of left field recommendation I'll ever give in one of these videos is Hosiana Mantra by Popol Vuh. Okay, so I don't know who, I don't know much about this, okay? I just kind of randomly found it one day and it's crazy. Okay, so it's like combining. It's like it's like kind of classically inspired, 
it's kind of ambient -y. And there's also this kind of, and then there's like this electric guitar vibe in here. It's really, it's not weird. It's actually very normal. But it's, it's a unique combination that I haven't really heard in this context before. Especially considering the kind of like religious overtones I'm getting. I don't really know like what's going on. There's not really words, right? But like literally like the last song is Ave Maria. What? Like, it doesn't really feel very religious, but then you, like, look at the cover, you look at the name, and you're like, okay, something's going on here. So I don't know what's going on there. But to vibe, I put it on while I was, like, doing homework or, like, reading a book, and then I just, like, it was just, like, <laughs> and I was listening to it after. I was like, wow, this is amazing. All right, next one is Daria Core 2. Enter here, hell to the left. <laughs> so Daria Core 2. So this is, like, mashup. EDM core. Um, so it's by Leroy, who is actually Jane Remover. And so Jane Remover here basically just like creates these crazy EDM s s uh, soundscapes, puts like 20 uncleared pop acapellas over them. It's really funny at times um, just how many things will be in there, how many different references and sound effects. Um, to me, I think the best way to put it is it's batshit insane. It's, it's kind of a hundred gex effect where you're laughing, but then you're also like nodding your head like really hard, like like really enjoying it. Um, this is one of my favorites. I love this on like car trips because it's like like long like road trips because it keeps keeps me focused or does it? Well, it keeps me awake. <laughs> and the, out of the three Dario cores, Dario core two is my personal favorite. Okay, and then we have another legend here, classic album alert. This one's Karma by Pharaoh Sanders. And so the best way I can describe this one is it's batshit insane. This is kind of like his response to A uh, Love Supreme by John Coltrane. This one came out, I don't know, I don't, I don't remember the timeline on it, but it did, I think it did come out after. Um, he was inspired by like the episodic nature of it and how it all related to it. So that's seen in like the, the creator has a master plan, the multi-phase thing. It like transforms from like one thing into the next, and then the next, and then somehow it's just like really chaotic and insane, and then it'll just transform into the most beautiful thing you've ever heard. It's great, and rip the goat, Pharaoh Sanders. And last, number 10, number 10. Okay, so number 10 is Laurel Halo with Dust. Big, big fan of this one. It's very weird, strange, yet kind of comforting, like kind of familiar. There's not really much Quite like it not good with genres once again so maybe something will pop up on screen with someone else who's smarter than me telling well not smarter than me but someone who like is more confident in themselves in terms of genres maybe saying what genre this is or, uh, it's kind of the closest comp i can think of is like salami rose joe lewis or even like the archie marshall um you know a new place to drown and this one was from like 2017 or 2016 long halo uh, legend, modern legend, in my opinion. And she hasn't really made anything quite like this since this album. Uh, her most recent album was kind of ambient. Um, so this is really, a, to me, this feels like a like lightning in a bottle type of album where I haven't really heard much like it. And I don't think I ever probably will. So those were, that was kind of flash fire. I kind of went through it kind of quick. I didn't really script to this i don't know if you can tell um which i could have probably gone into more detail but these were just like albums that like i was listening to this past week uh past month and to be fair i've listened to some of these i've listened to for years and years but yeah this is off the cuff jaytra was a listening corner maybe we can call this or i don't know maybe i'll do it again maybe i won't yeah. oh you thought you thought you were getting the fembus tutorial huh if if you listen to any of them leave a comment or send me a DM on Instagram, something like that. And if you have recommendations back for me, hit me with them.